Hi, my name is Rani. Welcome to Desa Yogi. Today's session, we are going to focus on our hips and legs and upper back, of course. Please prepare two blocks with you, one chair, one belt, and we will play with the wall today. Let's get started. Before we start our practice, I wanted to let you know about my online programs and workshops. Whether you're new to Iyengar Yoga and want to learn the basics in a systematic way, a seasoned practitioner looking to revisit the essentials, or a yoga teacher seeking inspiration. These programs and workshops are self-paced, allowing you to make consistent progress and revisit specific topics whenever you like. You can find the link in the description below. With that said, let's begin our practice today. Okay, first pose, we will use the wall. We are going to do Dvipada Supta Pavana Muktasan. So via the wall, we need to lay down. Before you going down, press your forearms. Move the buttocks away from your hips. And gently you bring your lower back down, spine down, and then you relax. Supta Tadasan. From here, you need to work on your feet to get connection into your lower back. Maintain the pressure on the lower back and you exhale. Use your exhalation to bring the front ribs down to the back of the ribs. When you are inhaling, you need to bring the energy up into your chest, press the shoulders down. When you're exhaling, Maintain the pressure on your feet and your lower back. Use your exhalation to lower the lower back down and press the lower back. And breathe normal. Stay here for a while. After this, maintain the pressure on the lower back and you bring your thighs, your knees towards your chest. Bring both knees toward your chest. But when you are moving your knees toward your chest, maintain the pressure on the lower back. Be firm on the lower back. And interlace your finger in front of your shin. When you inhale, you press the shin. So then the frontal thighs connected to the abdomen. From the abdomen, Use your exhalation. Bring the lower back down towards the floor and be firm on that. Move your outer corners of the shoulders down. The chin should be in. Bring the chin toward your chest so then you are lengthening the root of the neck towards the top of the neck and be with your breath. Dwi pada supta, pavana muktasan. Dwi means two, pada means legs. Pavana muktasan is a goddess of air. Bring the circulation of the air to lower your lower back down with exhalation. Be with your breath. After this, we are going to Lower your legs down, the left legs down, and then you strain your legs, press the left foot to the wall. If you need to adjust your body, you just need to move your body slightly backwards, but maintain the pressure on the lower back. Maintain the pressure on the lower back. Strain your legs. Strain your left legs, strain your left legs. Be firm on the left foot. Press your left toes, left heels. And you bring your right legs toward your chest. Levelize the hips. The hips need to be in line. Use the pressure on the left front thighs to bring the left hips down. The pressure on your right shin 
connected to the lower back. So then the lower pelvis, lower back, spine, shoulders need to be grounded to the floor. Maintain the pressure on your left foot. Lengthen the shin bone towards the foot. Be firm on the left thighs. Bring the left lower legs towards the floor. And use your exhalation to go deeper into the lower back. Use your exhalation. Bring the body weight to your lower back. Inhale and exhale. And slowly straighten your legs. We change into the other side. Do not tilting the lower back. Bring the left legs towards the chest. Interlock the fingers in front of the shin bone and we will redo it again. Each action that we do with the right side. Press your right foot from the knee joint. You need to lengthen the shin bone to the heels. Be firm on the right foot. You need to pull the right quadriceps up. Suck the quadriceps and then you press the front thighs down to bring the right hips down. Interlock the left fingers and press the fingers down. Press the shin bone connected to the left hip. Use your exhalation to broaden your chest to move your outer corners of the shoulders down and you breathe normal. Inhale and exhale, slow, soft and smooth. You need to feel the movement into the body. And slowly release the legs. Now we bring the feet together. We will do Supta Tadasan. If you can touch your inner feet together, touch it. But if you can't, you can always open your feet apart. I will show you with the feet together. So be firm on the inner feet. Be firm on the outer feet. Press the calf down, thighs down. Use your exhalation to bring the lower back down. So these front ribs need to bring need to go down. Do not tilt the lower back. And slowly, you raise your arms up in Urdhva Hastasan. Sukta Tadasan in Urdhva Hastasan. Interlock your fingers and you pull the thumbs up. Slowly release and change the interlocking of the thumbs and pull the trunk with your thumbs. Slowly release and lower your arms down, bend your knees and you can turn the body to the right side and gently come up. After this, we will do Tadasana, which is mountain pose. Use one block with you. I will recommend you to use a wooden block. Okay, place the wooden block into your inner thighs, grip it with your outer thighs. Move the outer heels out, toes in. From the knee joints, you lengthen the shin bone down and you press the feet firm. From the knee joint, you need to pull your thighs up. This quadriceps need to pull up. Grip the block so you can grip the hips. Move the middle buttocks into your body and then you move your outer hips back. In this pose, you need to grip your hips firm so you will grip your spine well. 
Gomuka sana, so from Urd Fahasta sana, you need to pull your trunk into your fingertips. Grip the shoulder bones. This is our shoulder bones. Okay, when you are lifting your arms up, this part, the shoulder bones, need to move in. You need to grip the shoulders and lengthen your arms. Pull your trunk with your arms. Now we bend your elbow and hold the elbow. Grip the elbow with your left palm and then you pull your elbow so then you can walk your left palms down. You can see on my back. Pull your elbow so you can walk your left palms down to open your right armpit chest. After you are pulling your elbow, you need to be firm on the palm behind your back. Hold it and you strain your left arms, turn the palm facing to the back, be firm on the feet. Now you bring your left arms and you interlace your fingers. If you can hold your one fingers, you hold it, two or all, you can grip your fingers. But if you cannot touch, you can always get a strap with you. Hold this strap. Use your inhalation to be firm on the feet. Use your exhalation. Walk the fingers, tips. So then the fingertips can touch. It's getting closer to each other. Inhale and exhale. Now slowly release your arms. You can release your strap. Raise your arms in Urdhva Hastasan to release your arms. Now we change into the other side. Bend your left elbow, hold your left palm, and you pull your palm, you pull your elbow with your palm, and then you walk your left palms down. And you need to hold the palm behind your back, and you straight your right arms, and turn the palm facing backwards. When you are turning, there is a rotation on your upper arms. So then the palm, you need to face the palm to the back side. And you bring your right palms behind your back and then you walk the back of the palms up and you grip the fingers, interlace the fingers, grip it. If you can pull your fingers, pull it. So you can push your left elbows more. So you can open your left armpit. Look forward. And then you look up. Look up to move your shoulder blade in. Now you grip the upper back. From Urdhva Hastasan, bend your right elbow, hold your right elbow with your left palm, walk the left palm down, hold the palm behind your back, now strain your left arms, turn the palm facing to the, to the back side, and you bring your left arms, walk the left palms behind your back. And if you can grip your fingers, grip your fingers. The more you grip, the more you can open your armpit chest. From here, I want you to look up. So then your upper back, look up and you throw your head back. So then you are moving your shoulder blade into your body. And from here, without changing the position of your upper back, you bring your head down. Look forward. Inhale and exhale. And slowly release. And we use the other side, the left side. Okay? From there, we may release the block. But you need to remember how you are gripping the block. The way the inner thighs is gripping the block, the block, you have to recall it again and you need to memorize into your body. Imagine that the block is in your thighs, so you need to grip the block with your outer thighs. When you are gripping the block, don't forget to move your middle buttocks forward. Now from here, we are going to do Paschima Namaskar. Okay? Open the feet apart, but the action of your inner thighs with the block, you need to apply it here. Press the block with your inner thighs. 
Strain your arms to the side, be firm on the feet. Now you turn your palm facing to the back and you bring your right arms behind your back and then you walk. Your left arm, left palm, left palm hold your left palm to your elbow. Here. So this left palm is helping your right elbow to move your right arms, right palms. You can walk your right palms up and place your right palm in the middle of your upper back. Open your shoulders, roll your shoulders back, grip the muscle of your upper back, and slowly release, and you change into the other side. Straight your arms, turn your palm, and then use your left arms to walk your left palms upward, and then you hold your left elbow, and then you pull your elbow, so then your left palm, left palm is walking and place the left palm into the middle upper back. Bring the, you, you, you may squeeze your uh, upper back, your shoulder, so then your shoulders is moving into each other's. Hold for a while, be with your breath, and then slowly release. This is a preparation for Pashima Namaskar. From here, we are going to do the pose. So you press the palm together behind your back. Turn the palm facing to the ceiling. Move your shoulders back. Walk the palms upwards. You need to press your palm into your middle upper back and you roll your shoulders back. Open your feet apart. Be firm on the lower legs. You need to lengthen the frontal shin and press the big toes, press the heels. From the knee joint, you need to pull the energy up into your thighs. This front thighs, which is your quadricep, need to pull up. And your outer hips need to move in. Remember the block. You need to grip the block with your thighs. Inhale and exhale. You need to move your shoulders back. Broaden the chest, bring your elbows back, and be with your breath. Inhale and exhale. Don't bring the body forward, but bring the body weight on your heels. Be with your breath, and slowly, gently release your palms down. Release your arms back to Tadasan. Get the block with you, one block, and place the block in the middle of your yoga mat. And you stand on the block with your left foot. We will do Friksasan, which is a three pose. You need to be firm on the left foot, on the block. Your front thighs need to be moved into the hips. Your back heels need to be lift up into the back of the thighs. Let the bones, let the femur bones move into the socket. Okay, and your right legs, right legs, open your right knee to the side. When you are moving your right knee, you need to bring your inner thighs towards your inner knee. But you need to be firm on the left thigh, left legs. Get the ankle, hold the ankle, and you lift your right foot. Place the right foot into the, right, the left inner thigh between the right foot and the left thigh, you need to be work together. When you are pressing the foot, you also need to press your right outer thigh in. Move the inner groin to the right knee. Bring the outer knee back. You need to move your right buttocks forward so there is a rotation action on the inner thighs, move into the inner groin. Hands on your hips, strain your arms to the side, turn the palm facing to the ceiling, raise your arms up. If you lose your balance, you can always use a chair in front of you. Now slowly release. You can touch the walls or you can Get the chair in front of you, like this. 
Let me show you. We use the other side with a chair. Be firm on the right legs. Move the right front thighs in. Bring the back of the thighs in. So your femur bone move into the socket. Open your right, left legs, left knee, and lift your left legs up. Hold the ankle, and then you place your left foot into the right inner thigh. From the left thigh, inner thigh, move the inner knee towards the outer knee, and you move your left buttocks forward. Be firm on the straight legs, because your straight leg is your anchor. After you find balance, you can straight your arms to the side. Turn the palm facing to the ceiling. Lift your arms up. Do not collapse the hips. You need to move your hips in. Imagine you are pressing the block with your inner thigh. Lift your arms. Lift your trunk with your arms. And inhale and exhale. Be with your breath. And slowly release your arms. Release your legs. And then you come down. We will do Adomukha Swanasana after this. Now you press your palms, bend your knees. This palm, this whole palm, this is what we call metacarpal. You need to press the metacarpal of the palms firm. Your muscle need to grip the bones. So you need to be firm on the palm. Follow with the left one. Now you press your toes down. Be firm on the palm, straighten your arms. This inner upper arms need to lift up. Press your toes, lift your knees away from the floor. Press the ball of the feet, lift the arch of the feet. So you can lift your inner thighs up. Push the chest towards your thighs and you lift your hips as high as you can. After you are lifting your hips, maintain the lifting on your hips. You straighten your legs. Push your thighs back. The front of the thighs need to push back. Raise your hips up. Push your thighs back. Maintain the lifting of your hips. Use your exhalation. Lower your heels down. Lower your heels down. Grip the knees. Grip the hips. Lift the arch to the thighs. Walk your feet. Open your feet apart. Inhale, lift your arms in Urdhva Hastasan. Now release your arms down. Relax for a while. Next, we will uh, do half Uttanasan. Remember, the focus is on your hips. Now, you face the wall. Face the wall. Make a cup, cup shape. Press the tip of the fingers, and then you move your legs back. Walk the legs back. If you feel tight on your hamstring, you can bend your knees. But you need to push the sitting bones back. And slowly, gently, use your exhalation to straighten your legs. Straighten your legs. Press your palms on the wall. Press your palms on the wall. The palms need to push your inner upper arms back so you can open your armpit chest more. From the armpit chest, you push the ribs back into your outer hips. Maintain the arch of your feet. Lift your inner thighs up. From the inner thighs, you need to push your outer hip back. And then you look down, inhale and exhale, lengthen the trunk, 
the spine by pushing your outer hips back, push your front thighs back. Be with your breath and slowly to come up, you bend your knees, walk your feet back, walk your feet forward and then you gently come up. Now we will do Utita Hasta Padangustasana 1. We will need a chair, a blanket or a folded yoga mat and one block with you. I will place the chair in front of me like this, but if you don't have a chair, you can always use a wall, but I will use a chair this time. Place the block in the middle of the chair. You need to measure because after this, we are going to lift our legs and place the heels on the top of the chair. Your left leg is your anchor. So you need to come back again how we are doing the Frixasan legs. How you need to be firm on the left legs. Right legs, place it. Press the right foot to connect it to your right hip. Maintain the hips in line, but you need to be firm on the left legs. Your right hips need to go down. From here, place all your hands on your hips, be firm on the hips, and strain your right legs and place the heels on top of the chair. When the heels is on the chair, you need to pull the outer heel back into the outer hips and you bring your right outer hip down. When you are moving your right outer hip down, you need to move the left inner thigh into your body. So your left leg is firm, right leg is firm, hips are firm. After this, straight your right arm to the side, turn the palm facing to the ceiling and raise your arms up. When you are lifting your arms up, you need to lift your arms from the hips. The traction you need to feel from the side of the trunk, armpit, and your arms. Straight bo both arms up and be with your breath. Slowly release your arms down, release your legs. Now you go down and change into the other side. Be firm on the right legs. Measure your hips. Your hips should be in line. Straighten your left legs. Pull your outer hips back. Move your right outer hip in. Lift your abdomen up. Straight your arms to the side. Turn. Lift your arms up. Inhale and exhale. Be with your breath. And lower your arms down. Release your legs. Bring your legs down. We will do side to it now. Utita hasta padangustasana tu with this chair. You just need to move your block facing to that direction and you stand on the block. Stand on the block. Move your front thighs into the socket. You press your left foot, be firm on the left thighs. So your bones need to move into the socket. Front thighs need to move in. Your back thighs need to move in. And you bring your right legs. Press the right foot onto the chair. And you need to roll your inner thighs out to move your right buttocks forward. Your right growing, your right inner thigh, need to move out to your knee. Your, your right outer knee need to move into the buttocks. Be firm on the hips, move your shoulders back. Slowly, you straighten your legs. Straighten your legs. Straighten your legs. When you are pressing your heels to the top of the chair, you need to bring the energy from the outer heels back, up, 
move up into the right buttocks. So you, after that, you can move your right buttocks forward. After you are in this position, straight your arms to the side, turn the palm facing to the ceiling, raise your arms up. And be with your breath. Stay for a while. Like three breaths, three breaths, or five. Inhale and exhale. Slowly release your arms down. Place your hands on your hips. Lower your right foot down. And come back to the Tadasan. And you change into the other side. Your right legs need to be firm on the block. Why we are using the block? So you can feel that your body is higher. So you can lift your pelvis more. Your front thighs need to move in. Your back thighs need to move in. So this whole femur, this whole thighs need to move into the socket. You need to grip. Imagine there is a block into your inner thigh. We are using the block before, right? So hands on your hips. Bring your left foot into, side, into the side. Press it. You need to be firm. These inner thighs need to open. Bring the inner thighs into your inner knee. From the inner knee, move the outer knee back. And you are moving your left, left buttocks forward. Maintain the body facing forward. Place your hands on your hips. Be firm on the straight legs. Now you place your left heels on top of the chair. Be careful. Good. After you are press, place, with it, place your heels, you need to press your heels. So then flex your feet to pull the energy up into the top thighs. Move your left buttocks forward. Be firm on the right legs because this is your anchor. And straight your arms to the side. Turn the palm facing to the ceiling. Raise your arms up. Lift your trunk with your arms. But you need to be firm on the hips. Be with your breath. Inhale and exhale. And slowly release your arms. Release your legs. Lower your legs down. And you may remove the chairs away. And you get to block with you. We are going to release the back body. The lower back with Uttanasan. Okay? Place the block in front of you, facing forward. You get to the wall and you rest your back pelvis. Move your sitting bones back and press the sitting bones to the wall. And you bend your knees. Lift your trunk from this lower abdomen. You need to lift the lower abdomen up into your chest, and then you press your palms on the block. When you are pressing your palms on the block, this palm is connected to your outer shoulders, okay? You need to push your outer shoulders back and push your sitting bones back towards the wall. From here, strain your legs, strain your legs. If you, can, if you don't have problem with your hamstring, you can strain your legs. But if you feel painful, and you cannot stand it, you can always stay on this position. Okay? This block need to put in line with your shoulders. So you can move your chest away from the floor. And then you look forward. Strain your legs if you can. Push the sitting bones towards the wall. And then you look forward. Look up. Inhale and exhale. Feel the traction on the posterior body. The anterior spine need to lift up. Be with your breath. Move the shoulders away from the floor. And slowly release the knees. And slowly come up. Last but not least, we may remove all the props to the side, we will rest in Viparita Karani. To do the pose, you need to go to the wall and you lie back, lie back, rest your 
lower back down, but your sitting bones need to touch the wall. Sitting bone needs to touch the wall. And your lower back need to relax on the floor. So this feet, you may bend your legs first. From the feet, you need to get the connection into your outer hips. From the outer hips, use your exhalation to press the lower back down. So these front ribs need to go to the lower back and breathe for a while. Relax completely your lower back. Let the lower back penetrate to the side. So your, you are broadening your lower back to the side. After this, you straight your legs one by one. But when you are straightening your legs, you need to bring the weight down to the outer hips. And the other legs, you need to bring the weight down towards outer hips. So you can rest your lower back. You may move your chin in to lengthen the back of the neck. So you can feel that the root of the neck is long to the top of the neck. Broaden the shoulders. Relax your arms to the side. Move the chin in. And you may close your eyes for a while. When you inhale, you need to bring the energy up into your chest. Maintain the chest broaden to the side. These outer corners of the shoulders, you need to relax to the floor. Inhale and exhale. When you when you exhaling, you need to release your face muscle. You need to relax your shoulders and your arms. Relax your hips and be with your breath. You can stay at this pose for a few minutes until your body is ready. You may close your eyes and relax completely. After you are ready, you can gently cross your legs and stay another 30 seconds. After 30 or one minute, 30 seconds or one minute, you can change the crossing of the legs. Stay relaxed. Whenever you're ready, you can always turn the body to the right side. Gently you come up. And you feel energized to start your day. Namaste.